Hey guys, we're back with another video, and uh, since today is the US Champions League finals, we decided to talk a bit about it. So Chelsea and Manchester City, and if we talk about Chelsea and Manchester City this season, I think Chelsea have defeated Manchester City three times, and uh, they'll be keen to go ahead and win this for the third time. Yes, uh, this uh, this will be. Fourth. Uh, in a in space of you know two months, I guess uh, it was. I think the first encounter was in the FA Cup semi final where uh, Chelsea defeated uh, Manchester City one nil, and the uh, latest encounter was on 18th, I guess or 15th. Uh, no, 15th was the final. Somewhere, yeah, just somewhere after, around, just yes. after the uh, semi final of Madrid versus Chelsea, yes. they played against Manchester City and defeated them two one. Two one. Uh, yes, so but if you look, you know, if you look at the Manchester City squad that time, the both uh, both of the time uh, Pep played a little rotated squad. It was not his proper main squad of proper eleven. You know, uh, De Bruyne was not there, Gundogan was not there, Sterling did not play, Mahrez did not play. The players, you know, who had who who had the most impact. Phil Foden also did not play. So the players, you know, that had the most impact for City, uh, City this year, they were not uh, in both of the matches. So you can say that still, you know, Manchester City has that upper hand. And if you look at the recent form, Chelsea. Chelsea were beaten by Arsenal. They were beaten by Leicester City in the FA Cup final. They were beaten by Aston Villa, mm -hmm. two one. So form is against Chelsea. And other hand, on the other hand, you can look at City. You know they are they are Premier League champions. They are coming coming with that sort of a mentality. And they you know they do not have to worry that much about PSG. We all know they defeated PSG single handedly mm -hmm. in that second leg. So yeah, we can say that form and momentum is alongside Pep Guardiola, but the history is alongside uh, Thomas uh, Thomas Tuchel Chelsea. Yeah, and uh, I think this is the second time in a row Thomas Tuchel will be playing the UEFA Champions League final. And I'm sure he'll be keen to probably go and win this. Of course, uh, like you said, uh, Manchester City have the upper hand. But Chelsea do have motivation on their side because they are playing the second UEFA Champions League final after uh, like 8 or 9 years. Mm, 2012, when Drogba scored Yeah, that. so it's like 8 or 9 years only. Correct. And you know that memory will be still fresh in their mind, you know. And most of the players that uh, play that will that will be playing for Chelsea, you know, Mason Mount, uh, Ben Chilwell, Jorginho, uh, not not Jorginho, uh, these uh, these James, you know, all these players, you know, uh, Ben Chilwell was not a part of academy, but Mason Mount was a part of the uh, Chelsea academy. Tabby Abian was a Chelsea academy student as well. These James, <laughs> all two, you know, they would have seen, you know, that Chelsea team win the trophy, and they would probably, you know, at two thousand twelve, they would be probably, you know, ten and eleven years old. Uh, playing for uh, Chelsea's under 12, and they would be thinking, you know, yeah, upon being in Chit Kilan, yes, sir. You know, that kind of mentality would be still there in those guys. So, yeah. And if you look at, you know, the most influential player that uh, Chelsea had this year is, uh, sorry, I would say, Mason Mount, because he has been a mm. creative force uh, and he's, and, you know, he would be, you know, happy to win a trophy against Chelsea, and so he would be that extra motivated. Although, you know, all the players would be motivated, but, uh, you know, these Chelsea Academy players would be extra motivated to win, win it for their home team. Correct. And uh, also, I think this is the last time Aguero will be playing for Manchester City. Mm. Can you imagine the scenes, you know, Manchester City are uh, one all tied to Chelsea and uh, in the 90 plus, uh, 90 second minute, 48 second, Aguero heads and puts the ball into the net and wins this game for uh, Manchester City. Can you imagine the scenes like that? Uh, Martin, Martin Tyler, you know, the commentator who, who actually said that Aguero, he would have probably, he would, you know, uh -huh. he's probably old now. He would have probably heart attack, you know, saying the Aguero line. <laughs> so yeah, that would be you know great thing. And as he, I think so, in an interview he said that he will not leave City unless and until he wins a Champions League trophy. And probably you know he is leaving. They might win a Champions League trophy. You know, his Bavishwani could come to you know. Yeah, I, I I just read that in a post that eight years ago he said that he mm -hmm. wants to stay with Manchester City as long as they win the cha as you know the, he, that he wants to win a Champions League with Chelsea uh, City and uh, his dream might be coming true today, uh, which and uh, like like you said they've got the upper hand so he can actually relax before the game too. Um, yes, and I don't think so. He's gonna start. He will definitely come on bench. Uh, because, uh, so there are a lot of you know. Uh, we all know Pep doesn't play with a proper striker. Uh, they play a false nine system, false nine Cotto Pelas something kind of system. You know where each and every player you know rotates in the system and probably you know Gundogan plays sometimes. Gundogan plays as a striker. Sometimes De Bruyne plays as a striker. Sometimes Foden plays as a striker. Sometimes Sterling plays as a striker. So you know uh, in that kind of system, un it's unpredictable kind of system. You know you cannot predict mm -hmm. who is going to play which position. 
sometimes you know Bernard Bernard Silva sometimes plays at a you know, as a, in the team you know you can see in the team sheet that he is a he is a striker but you can see him playing as a midfield you know so anything right. you know all these and kind of things happen yeah and i think the unpredictability is the reason why pep guardiola has been so successful uh, across europe especially in the champions league with barcelona he had exceptional players back then and uh, he's got exceptional players now with manchester city as well so another champions league trophy for pep guardiola i think i should be rest assured for this uh, you know and again you know uh, with the kind of football you know the unpredictability players don't know with whom to mark you know uh, if you are defender and you are covering you are we have been told to cover the center forward but you don't know who's who's who's, who's the center forward here who is going to make that turn, you know you don't know that and you probably you know just standing there and so when you probably you know make a and you probably you know, wouldn't notice you know gundogan who plays as a center mid you would make a striker turn and you would say that are he's a center mid he's not going to make that turn but he makes that turn you know and he becomes free to just tap in the ball you know that kind mm. of uh, football you know we call, uh, people call it total football you know where each each player is uh, what you can say comfortable in playing the different role you know phil foden you know who's who is probably mm-hmm. his preferable position is a center attacking midfielder he can play as a left wing he can play as a striker he can play as a center mid he can play a number say number 8 role so you know that kind of football mm-hmm. you know uh, pep has uh, what you can say this is a completely different uh, pep team you know that uh, one uh, that completely different team from the barcelona that won in 2011 barcelona had you know individual players you know who know what their role was and you know what they do, they know what what they have to do but this is a completely different squad you know the players are constantly shifting in and out of the position going into other different positions mm-hmm. uh, taking different kind of roles so this team and that team is completely different and you know this shows what kind of uh, you know journey he has had uh, throughout his career you know uh, learning few things you know learning from his mistakes uh, it, uh, what you can say uh, mistakes ko bhi matlab sudhar 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 lana as we all know you know we were laughing at them last year you know they lost to leon and then previous to that they lost to spurs So, you know he has kind of what you can say uh, uh, ev- evolutionized his tactics and provided some new kind of football which is you know difficult to adjust uh, as a defensive as a defensive team so yeah that's why i'm saying you know manchester city has an upper upper hand in this in this game exactly and uh, that's what the experts are reckoning to so quick question mm-hmm. who do you think other players to watch out for both city and chelsea <sighs> So for City, you know, we we cannot predict anyone. But I will say, I will still say, you know, uh, Mahrez is the one to look for. Looking for, I'm looking for. For he has had, yeah, he has had yes. Uh, everyone, you know, talks that uh, Briad Mahrez doesn't turn up in big games, but certainly, you know, this season he has certainly turned up in those games. Against PSG, also we saw he scored three goals, and before that, uh, Dortmund also he was a key figure in that win in both the wins as well. So I will certainly go for Briad Mahrez for City uh, as a watch out for. alongside that you know i would be excited to see what kind of a role uh, gudogan plays over here he has uh, you know he is the main reason you know, when city had that uh, 21 one minutes. thing i just read i read a post yesterday that uh, gundogan might probably miss today's game due to an injury mm-hmm. i'm not sure how bad this injury is but this is what i read uh, i read uh, it happened due to, during the training period but i'm not sure if he's going to play but uh, yeah there's injury scare in city's team mm-hmm. So you know, Gundogan is one of the main key. You know, uh, when City had that eleven, uh, uh, when they won twenty-one games in a row, Gundogan was the main force in that. Uh, he scored, he had scored, you know, something twelve or thirteen goals in eleven games in those period. So he is one of the driving force. And if Gundogan doesn't play, then I, I think you know, Bernardo Silva will play. Uh, Pep should not go for uh, Dolly and uh, who's other defensive Dolly and Fernandinho in the lineup. He should mm-hmm. go for if 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 Gundogan is injured, he should go for Dolly. uh banade silva and dibroyne or fernandino dibroyne silva dibroyne and banade silva so yeah uh, gundagan is one of... okay for chelsea you know the position you know uh, it will be interesting to see who will play alongside werner uh, it would it can mm-hmm. be pulisic it can be havertz pulisic has that pace you know he can exploit that uh, on the flanks probably then deep with the ball deep into the city line with the ball and can be used as a counter counter attacking force uh, with havertz you know you get that ability he has that ability to hold up the ball to probably you know uh, try to dribble past one or two players and if you know ruben mm-hmm. diaz comes out to press him then uh, he uh-huh. has that ability you know to just uh, p- p- get, uh, get just get away from uh, ruben diaz and try to pass it to someone who is running into that free space so yeah any one of them who plays uh, would be an important one and again i would probably focus uh, on kante because his role will be important as well he has to uh, contain all the city players you know because you don't know who you don't know who is going to play who 
probably Pep will play with an inverted wing back. Probably he will per se his wing back to play outwards. Probably you know someone from midfield, good one can join in that half place, half pace. So you know, he has to decide. You know which player he has to mark now and which player he has to leave <laughs> for now. So he has a he has a lot of decisions. He would be having a lot of decisions to make on the pitch, and his decision will be important. You know where City is going to attack and where Chelsea is going to defend. So Kante and probably you know someone from Havertz or Pulisic are gonna be the main key players for Chelsea. Exactly, and uh, that was Champions League final uh, preview from our side. And if you're interested to watch, you can tune on to Ten Sports or rather Sony Sony uh, Sony Ten Sony, Sony, Sony Sports Sony Network. <laughs> Sony, Sports Sony Ten, 10. <laughs> and uh, the game is gonna begin tonight, 12:30 a.m. And I uh, will be excited to watch the game. Mm. And uh, we hope you are too. So uh, we'll see you in the next video. Just one one question, one question. Prediction, your prediction. Prediction. My prediction. I think I'll go with. I think that uh, not more than three goals are going to be scored in this game. So mm. I'll go with Chelsea. Maybe sorry, I'll go with City. Maybe they'll win two nil. Mm. Or uh, yeah, two nil. I don't think so, Chelsea is going to score. So I have you know two scenarios right now in my mind. Uh, one scenario is Chelsea probably scoring in the first twenty minutes, and I see Chelsea scoring uh, in the first twenty minutes, and maybe you know City might. And that uh, if Chelsea score first, then City will win it to two one in extra time. And if uh, mm-hmm. City manages to score first, you know, and City would probably you know score after 25-30 minutes. So, and if City manages to score first, then City will win two 0 in the 90 minutes. So, those uh-huh. are my predictions. And tomorrow we will be back with the podcast, you know, talking about this game and probably talking about some of the Euro. So, yeah, I will leave it to over to Amir. Exactly. So we are. It's like we are predicting the same thing, and uh, yeah, like you said, two 0 might be the most mm-hmm. realistic scenario that's what i think mm-hmm. and uh, yeah like i said not more than three goals are gonna gonna be scored so that's what we have for you in this video we'll see you in tomorrow again mm-hmm. talking about this final and uh, the new champions league well. format that they were talking about mm-hmm. and the uh, uefa uh, euro league final as well. a lot of things have been happening in football right now and we'll be discussing each and every uh, every topics tomorrow so we'll see you tomorrow peace out peace out